we can get started. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the uh, April edition of the CCV Skills Seminar. Um, I'm pleased to introduce uh, Lenore Pipes. Um, Lenore is a postdoc in the Nielsen Lab. Currently, she's working on developing methods for analyzing environmental DNA. Her graduate studies involve studying uh, the evolution of alternative splicing in primates. She's experienced working with very large data sets on the order of 500 terabytes um, and has experience with a vast array of bioinformatics analyses, including but not limited to differential gene expression and identifying EQTLs, genome and transcriptome assembly and annotation, detecting natural selection and calculating FASCON phylo P scores <clears throat> and building custom tracks for uh, UCSC genome browser. And uh, today, Lenore will talk about uh, Unix, uh, scripting, and, and parallelism, and we're very excited. And yeah, feel free to take it away. All right. Well, thanks to everybody for coming. This is really meant to be an interactive workshop. I'll be doing um, mostly a live demonstration, um, and it's really focused on um, Unix scripting and how to parallel parallelized jobs, mainly for genomics data. So a lot of the tasks I'm gonna go over are, for example, if you have like hundreds or thousands of FASTQ files and you wanna do um, the same manipulation on all of those files, how can we efficiently uh, run, run jobs both locally on either your laptop or a local server or on Savio high, per, high performance computing cluster. Um, so please, if you have like questions or issues um, with any of the, it's really meant to be like, so you guys can follow along uh, with, the, with the exercises. Um, and I thought I'd start by like just doing a fun little example. Um, so the workshop is assuming that you know how to navigate like basic um, commands on the command line, um, seeding into different directories, um, uh, lo logging into a server, like changing permissions on files, that, that sort of thing. Uh, is everyone comfortable with that mainly? You know, simple, simple Unix commands. Um, does everyone have access to a command line? Okay. Um, so one cool little example that I like to use is the weather app. I'm not sure if this is on the people using Windows, but on Mac, you can just do um, this command curl, wtcr.in, and then you can type in a location and then the weather will pop up. Uh-oh, okay, there it goes. <laughs> Um, my screen is smushed, but if you if you do that command, you'll come out with this in the background here, where you can see the weather for your location or any other location. Um, you can try like Tokyo. Comes up, can't really see it. It's because my screen is smushed here. Um, but that's a like really fun example I like to bring up. And also, if you like forget the date, you can. Uh, there's a built in calendar on the command line, it shows you. If you just type cal, um, you'll it'll come up with the, the monthly calendar, and you can change that to like the yearly calendar. So it's helpful if you're on the command line. Um, so, um, so, why do we still need? the shell, well, why do we still use the command line? It's over 50 years old, um, but basically everything that you can do in a graphical user interface, uh, you can do on the command line. And 
these are very simple programs and back when uh you know they had very large computers and you're only able to type a few commands that's why they made the the unix commands very short like sed or grep um and uh so these are very simple programs very efficient programs that just m let you manipulate files very easily and they're designed to be chained together through uh, the pipe function which takes one output from one program redirects it to another program um, and it because there's no there's very little overhead um, it's very it's super fast so it's much more efficient than than using something like a, a GUI um and for this workshop i'd like everyone to uh download the the repo if you want to follow along with the exercises um we're going to be using this command called parallel uh so if you don't have parallel installed if you're on a mac uh you can do brew install par parallel um Adam, can you let me know if someone's like has a chat? Cause I don't, I don't see. Okay, thank you. Um, so can people let me know like when they've been able to download the the repo? I'll put the link in the chat. Oh yeah, it's right here. Okay. Uh. <laughs> It's actually on the uh, it's on the website already. Um, CCBSkillsM.github.io. So just let me know when people have done that already. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, so the first exercise I thought we'd go through is um, just uh, going over some simple for loops and how to manipulate files using a, a simple for loop. Uh, if people are still having trouble downloading the files, let me know. Um, okay. Um, so say you have a bunch of pictures on your computer, um, and these would be, um, I put them in exercise 1A. So if we CD into exercise 1A, and then we list the files by LS, um, there are, if we count the number of files, so there's 500 dog pictures in this file or in this directory. And say we want to re rename all of these files to say the name of the dog instead. So, I mean, there are two things you can do. You can either clear out your calendar for the rest of the day and rename them on in, in, your, in your computer individually or we can write a for loop on the command line. Um, so say we want to rename, we want to change this prefix dog to rename it to the, the name of the dog, which I'll call Rambo. So to do this, we can write a simple for loop uh, in a simple for loop, um, 
we can designate a variable i in um, to go from one, or I'll just start with one to 10 to do an example. Uh, so this is going from i uh, one to 10, and it's inclusive on the bounds. Um, we can just uh, echo. So that's just gonna print what the variable name is, what what very what what the variable i is in this for loop. So you see in this for loop, we just go from i one to ten. Um, so we have uh, these dog pictures going from from one to five hundred. So uh, we would do an inclusive bounds one to five hundred. And then to rename the file, we use the move, move command, uh, which moves the, the old file name to the new file name. So we can do move dog underscore, and then we have our, our, our variable name here. Um, but actually before, before I do this, uh, move is a really powerful command. So I like to make sure I'm moving it to the right uh, file name. Um, so I might do like this to, just to make sure I'm moving it to the right file name. So it looks correct there. Um, so I'll start, oops, so I'll start again. So the name is dog underscore JPG, and then the name of our dog. So we can do something like this. It takes a minute and then we'll list the files in the directory again. So it looks like we rename all of the files. So everyone was able, everyone able to do that, run that? Yes. Um, what if, I don't know if you said this already, but what do the brackets do? So the brackets the just, oh, uh, so Fiona asked, um, what do the brackets do? So the brackets kind of enclose your variable name. So it's kind of like a safekeeping. Uh, you can you can use the variables without the brackets. I mean, the the first set of brackets are inclusive with the going from i to one to five hundred. But the for the variable name, it's safer to use the brackets with the the dollar sign outside. But um, uh, you can use uh, dollar sign i, but you have all these like other special characters like the underscore and the the period, for example, that that follow there before and after it. So we kind of want to keep the the variable enclosed. Yeah. Uh, what was the question? Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it is string interpolation. Um, okay, so everyone's good on this exercise. Um, so next we'll go into exercise 1B. So that's a simple for loop for renaming files. Oops. Um, so in exercise 1B, um, we, we might want to run, rename all of these files in parallel together. So running all these process, the move prof process at the same time. And 
we can also use the for loop to do to do this uh, um, this command uh, in parallel by just putting the ampersand after your command here. Um, but this is, you know, move doesn't take a very uh, long amount of time, so it's not very apparent uh, that it's uh, running in parallel. But if you put the ampersand at the end of the command, it'll run the, um, all of these moves at the same time. So you use like eight CPUs for this. So. So we have only eight files or eight, eight files in here. And we want to rename those eight. And then we can put um, the ampersand to run in parallel. And so this will tell you it's it's finished running all of these um, eight, eight jobs. I'm not sure why it went only to six. But yeah, um, is everyone able to complete that? Yeah, okay. So that's how to, to run simple for loops, both in serial and uh, in parallel. Um, and so for a more practical example, or actually this should be one, C. Let's see. So for a more practical example, we'll go into um so this just tells me that those other two jobs seven and eight are also finished. Um because if you do an ampersand, it runs the the job in the background, and then you'll get a it'll print to the screen once the job is finished. Um, so we'll CD into exercise 1C. Uh, and this is a more practical example. And say you have a bunch of fast Q files. Uh, I'm going to see how many there are in here. This is 176 fast Q files in this directory. And say we want to uh, gzip all of these fast queue files. Um, so we can use, you know, the concept of the for loop um, to zip up uh, all of these fast queue files. So instead of going from one to 500, we can just use like uh, the asterisk and the dot fast queue to, to pull all of these fast queue files into the loop. Um, and then if you echo this file, for example, uh, it'll just print out all of the files um, uh, to the screen. Um, so if you do for file in star.fastq, and then we gz up this file. Is someone chatting or does someone ask a question? Ask me why does it say operation now? Um, I don't know in what context. Um, Anthea, can you can you elaborate? Uh... Um, so like for the like move dog to ramble, like after each time. Turn, oh, 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 now I can hear. Yes. All right. Like after, uh, the MV dog to like ramble, JPG thing. Like every time yes. it does that, it says operation not permitted. Um, do other people have permission issues? No. Um, um, can you just, um, if you do 
like um, ls dash alth. It'll it'll tell you it'll give you the permissions on the on one of the files. Um, okay. Uh, ls dot alth. Yeah, you got to yeah. make sure you have like read it and write permissions. Okay, thank you. Okay. Let me know if that doesn't work. Uh, what what system are you on? Um, MacBook. Oh, okay. Um, but other people don't have permission issues. No? Okay. Uh. Okay, so say we want to gzip all of these files in the in, in the directory. Um, we can run the our for loop like this, and then we can ls to see that they've been indeed gzipped. So we got to have them all gzipped. So is everyone good on that gzipping files? Um, so instead of using a for loop, you can actually use a, a command called find. Um, and can everyone make sure they have like the find command just to find on their command line? I think it should be in uh, user bin. So I'm just gonna un un g zip g unzip all of these files because they're already g zipped. So just g unzip this. To use this uh, um, to demonstrate this other way of gzipping. So, this is just the command that I use here. Uh, and everyone has find on their computer. Um, so, with find, this is just another way of using, uh, manipulating all the files in, in the directory. Uh, so with find, we can do something like find and dot stands for in this directory, um, the name. Uh, so it's going to be our fast queues again, and then we can do xargs. And these brackets just stand for um, the the file that find find has found in that uh find uh, in their in the the name selection so if we do this command uh we can see that we also can gz up this way using find um And we can also combine this uh, so we can pipe the results of find um, into a program called parallel to parallelize this gzipping process. Um, so like with my, my previous example with the dog name, we only had eight process these running at the same time, but because there's 176 fast queue files, we don't want to run 176 processes at the same time. So parallel allows you to choose the number of jobs you want running at this at in parallel uh, with this dash J option. So this first command is saying, Find find all the name find all the files with a name ending in fastq, and 
uh, pipe those names to a program parallel and run the gzip command on four of these files at the same time. Uh, so one, once one is finished, then it'll go through the list of the 176. Uh, it looks like some people have questions. There's a question about XR. Oh, um, yeah, so XR just allows you to execute this command, like the a bash. Um, and then like gzip could be like echo, for example. So it really allows you to do this like bash type execution on the command line. Um, Okay, great. Um, because uh, xargs dash i tells you to this is this is the uh the string that you want executed in the af after xargs. So a dash i is like the option for the string and then gzip it's kind of like your your variable uh, that you're giving to the the execution command um so we'll try this command here uh, running this gzip in parallel for, uh using four processes at the same time uh, let me just check the time. I'm sure in time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll g just g and zip this so we can g zip it again. Um, oh, um, one second. Okay, so I just unzipped it again. Uh, so this was the command I use. People want to follow along. Um, so to do this in parallel, so dash J uh, is you can set this to however many um, processes you want running at the same time. So I'll choose four. And then run them in parallel. You can't really see because this command was like really uh, quick, but the, just trust me that they ran four at the same time. Um, and we have them all gzipped again. Um, and this one, this one's the same. These are the same command actually. Um, but if you do like find dot name, uh, it prints out with this dot, uh, dot forward slash, um, so we use said to get rid of that dots forward slash and say, for example, you want to run the results of your command. Uh, you want to get the standard out of your command to a log file. Um, we can just rename, we can just get rid of that dot forward slash. Um, so I'm just gonna run, uh, jump to this part, this part here. So uh, this is a case where you want to run the same job on all of your files uh, four at a time, and you want to print the standard out to a log file uh, from, from that job. Uh, so first I'll G and zip again. Yeah. 
So set is just gonna replace that that dot um, forward slash, and then we pipe to parallel, run four at a time, gzip that file, and then redirect standard out and standard error to a log file. Does everyone follow what I'm doing here? Um, okay. So if we run this, ran in parallel, oh, where's my, oh no. Oh, here we go. I'm not sure why, what happened there. Oh, now we got the fast queue in there. Um, okay, sorry, I, I messed this up. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do uh, the log file correctly. So just unzip, unzip these again. Just my unzip. Um, so we're gonna do find, and we wanna pull the name. Then we wanna remove the, the period and forward slash, oops. And then we want to get rid of the fast queue. So we're doing two, two, um, parallel commands, one to move that dot forward slash, and then one to move the fast queue, dot fast queue from the end of the name, yeah. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, and then we'll go to parallel. And then we redirect to log file. Oh, we want to gzip dot fast queue because we removed the fast queue from the variable. Oh no. Flag. Sorry, I thought I had done these already. Um, said, okay, so got that. Doesn't like this. Uh. Oh, wait, I'm putting seek, not said. Okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm putting seek. Okay, there we go. Um, four, G's up. Impersand. Does everyone see that? What did I do there? Do you mind Yay. pasting that line into the chat? Oh, yeah. Thank you.
Okay, so I'll fix this one too. Um, okay, so now we've gzip all the files and then we have the log files for each um, job that we ran. Um, so this will allow you to see if like, if there's any error that occurred on one of the jobs, you can go back to that log file and look at what happened. Um, so we'll go, oh, what time is it? Okay, so we'll go to the next one, next exercise. So for this exercise, I'm going to make a new directory called exercise 1D. Uh, so in this direct, uh, in this exercise, um, say we want to gzip all the files again, print to a log file, but also have uh, a timer for how long each job took on on that file so this would be helpful for like uh if you're doing any sort of benchmarking uh you have like the the user time that um your your job took on each 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 file uh so we made a new directory called exercise 1d and then I have this script here, exercise 1C. Um, so exercise 1C is just a simple bash script of what we've been doing uh, previously. Um, dollar sign one is the input, the, the first argument for the bash script uh name equals uh base name of file dot fastq so this is the same manipulation where we want to strip the suffix so we want to get rid of the fastq and just uh have the the file name so we can rename the log files the name underscore run log as before and then we'll have another file called the time log um uh where which will just be the name of the 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 original fastq and time dot out um and then hopefully everyone will have this user bin time uh so you can use user bin time to to do the benchmarking on that um on that job to output the time log P is just um, telling the, the program which uh, language to use. Dash C is the ex executing function. So just gzipping those files. Um, exercise 1D. And then, then printing out the log file. Uh, but, um, so let me go into exercise two or exercise one C again to unzip, unzip, or we can just copy over the file. So we have that um, exercise one D. We're going to copy the files, just the gzip ones over to, or not one D, one C and copy those to exercise 1D. And then we can CD into exercise 1D, and then we'll just un-gzip, un because these are all gzipped. Um, so we're ready to run our bash script now, uh, with the time, time benchmarking. 
So I like to use um, a wrapper when uh, writing these executing functions because we can combine um, find with uh, our, our, our parallel command. So we can run four at the same time using find and execute the, the exercise 1c.sh. Um, so, and uh, so this is exercise one D. Oh, exercise one C wrapper. Okay, so this is actually pulling everything from exercise 1C. Uh, sorry, I screwed up here. So we're gonna go into exercise 1D and just remove, or just remove the files from exercise 1D because it's gonna populate there. But then we have to unzip the ones from exercise 1C. Okay, does everyone see that what happened? So we have the unz or one c un g unzipped, and then we can run our wrapper command to run all the commands, uh, all the jobs in in parallel at four at a time. Um, and uh, getting a file for benchmarking and our standard out and standard error log files. So we'll run the exercise 1C wrapper. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, that didn't work. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so they're all in there. So I think it's like this. 
Uh, let me just see if this worked. Okay, so this one worked. Uh, does everyone, can ever, I'll put this in the chat here. So this is just basically everything that's in the, the wrapper, uh, command. Um, Did that one work for everyone? Um, so we can look at one of these time the out files. Oh wait. Uh, so um, you know, because this the, there's nothing, these are files are empty. Um, this took like no time, but um in other more uh, if there's more computationally demanding jobs, uh, you'll get a time benchmarking in these time.out files. Uh, um, I'm running out of time. But, um, so the next exercise is... Um, Maybe I'll just go through, I won't live demo this, but so we can get somewhat through to Slurm. So the next exercise is if you want to pass two arguments to your job file, um, you can have um, a file called one, uh, an example file like this, where your the first column is your first argument that you want to supply to your job. The second column is a second argument that you want to supply to your job. Um, we can use that parallel command again, um, but instead having having these two inputs going into this other script. Uh, here. Um, so in this, in this bash script, the dollar sign one is that first argument. And then the dollar sign two is that second argument, um, which you can feed to the, the parallel command. Um, does everyone get that? How to use find and parallel? Single, one argument, multiple arguments, writing time, time benchmarking, and log files. Um, so I don't really have a whole bunch of time left, but um, maybe I can quickly go on to using Savio, an HPC cluster. Um, who, does anyone have experience here using an HPC cluster, kind of, yes. Um, so just for, for time's sake, I think I'll just go over um, maybe um, how, how this works instead of demonstrating, because uh, I only have like two minutes left. <laughs> um, but once you have access to, to Savio, you can log in. There's uh, separate nodes for data transfer. So if you're, you're doing data transfer, you have to use this DTN, uh, data transfer node. But if you just want to log in, it's the HPC one. Um, and then everybody has a, their own scratch directory, which is where you want to do most of the heavy lifting for your jobs. Um, and then to submit a job to the, um, to the H uh, to the cluster, you need to write what's called a, a, a scheduling script. So it's a, 
a script to run a script, basically. Um, and this is just a simple example, hello world example, where um, you can have uh, your job name, the account name is um, the billing of where, uh, uh, how your, your um, job is gonna be accounted for uh, billing wise and then the partition that you want to run on, and then the total amount of time you um, think you're going to have. So there's a bunch of different partitions, can't really see here. Um, but some of the note partitions are for large memory, small memory. And you can also like get an email once the job starts or if it fails and when it's over. Um, and what I typically do in running parallel jobs on the, uh, the HPC cluster, I, I write a job uh, that, that creates these job scripts. Uh, so I won't have a whole lot, I won't have time to go over this, um, but you can look at this um, after the workshop, but typically, or maybe can I get rid of this side here. Um, so you might want to do this as an exercise afterwards, um, but you'll have to change uh this is just where my python stored so you'll have to change that the hash the shebang um but this this uh script will just write a bunch of slurm scripts that you can use um to run the job in parallel on on the hpc cluster so um uh, this will run like a, a bow tie script. So it runs these task files, uh, which I, I don't really have time to go over, but um, it'll, run, it'll, run, it'll run the task files, which are running this bow tie, bow tie to command. Um, on the, the job. So if, if people want to, to try that out afterwards, um, there's only one read in these FASTQ files, so it's not going <laughs> to, it's just a demonstration for exercise or, yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, I'm out of time. So yeah, I... I'm sure people have questions though.